At this point in abstract algebra, you've probably realized there are a lot of different groups, but not all groups are as different as they may seem. Some groups look different, but actually have the exact same structure. And these groups are called isomorphic, and there exists a function between them called an isomorphism. Today, we're going to go over isomorphic groups, isomorphisms, we'll see a table example of isomorphic groups, we'll go through an actual example of proving two groups are isomorphic. We'll talk a little bit about showing that two groups are not isomorphic, and we'll finish by looking at a few important theorems. Timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. All right, once again, isomorphic groups are groups that look different on the surface, but actually have the same structure. So these are groups that have different substance. They're made up maybe of different elements. They might even have a different operation, but they actually have the exact same form. And you're probably already familiar with some relations that are a lot like this, like congruence, for example. These are two triangles, and sure, they're not exactly the same triangle, this one is to the right of this one, and it's also rotated, but really they're the same. I mean, if we take this triangle and rotate it a little bit, clearly they're the same triangle. They are congruent. Or similarity. These two trapezoids aren't the same. This one is smaller and it's to the right, but really if we just make this trapezoid a little bigger, we see they're the same shape. These relations both have this idea of different substance, but same form, just like isomorphic groups. All right, here's the definition. Let G1 and G2 be groups. A bijection F from G1 to G2, where for any two elements A and B in G1, F of AB equals F of A, F of B, is called an isomorphism from G1 to G2. And if such a function exists from G1 to G2, we say that G1 is isomorphic to G2. And we may write that like this, with an equal sign with a tilde over the top. G1 is isomorphic to G2. Let's unpack this definition. You probably already know what a bijection is. Link in the description if you need to review. It's a function that's injective and surjective. Certainly, if two groups have the same structure, we should be able to put them into a one-to-one -one correspondence. So there should be a bijection between them. But this bijection needs to have a special property, namely this property here. If we compose two elements from G1 and then put them in the function, we're going to get the same thing as if we had put the two elements in the function separately and then composed those images, which are actually elements of G2. This is sometimes called preserving the group operation. Whether we compose A and B with the group operation of G1, or we send them through the function and compose them with the group operation of G2, we're going to get the same thing. And let me just point out that subtle detail once more. When we write AB on the left side of the equation, those are elements of G1, and so they're being composed with G1's operation. But on the right, F of A, F of B, these images are both elements of G2, and so they're being composed with the operation of G2. It's certainly possible that the operations of isomorphic groups are different. All right, this one detail about the bijection preserving the group operation is critical, so I want to also offer you this diagram that might help you see what it means. If our isomorphism F maps A to A prime and B to B prime, it must map AB to A prime B prime. This is what this equation means. This is what it means for F to preserve the group operation. And a bijective function between two groups to be isomorphic must satisfy this property. In short, it says that the image of a product should be the same as the product of the images. One way to think about what an isomorphism is doing is that it's renaming the elements of our group G1 with the names of the elements of G2. It's also changing the operation, and in this way, the function transforms G1 into G2, because they're really the same group except for the names of the elements and the operation. So I just want to drive that point home. If two groups are isomorphic, then really they are exactly the same group except for the names of their elements 
and operations. What an isomorphism does is relabel the elements and the operation of one group to transform it into some isomorphic group. Here's an example of isomorphic groups with a group table. The first group, G1, is Z3, the additive group of integers mod 3. And then we have this second group, G2, containing elements E, A, and B, with this multiplicative operation. And here are their tables to see how they work. This function f, mapping 0 to e, 1 to a, and 2 to b, is clearly a bijection, and indeed it transforms g1 into g2. It is an isomorphism. Since it's obviously a bijection, all that remains to be checked is that it preserves the group operation. We can see that it does if we look at the tables, but just to write out one example of preserving the group operation, let's consider f of 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 from our group G1 is just 1, so f of 0 plus 1 is f of 1, which is a. But a is the same as e plus a, or excuse me, e times a, here in G2, we're using multiplicative notation. But e times a, by definition of our function, is the same as f of 0, because that's e, times f of 1, because that's a. And there we have it f of 0 plus 1 equals f of 0 times f of 1. In this specific example, I know that we're using additive notation for one group and multiplicative notation for the other one, which is why it's really clear here that the operation between 0 and 1 is different from the operation between their images. In the definition, this wasn't as clear because I was using slightly lazier notation. Looking back up here in the definition, we just have to know from context that AB is using the operation of G1 and F of A, F of B uses the operation of G2. Just wanted to point that out. You can go ahead and check that the function preserves the group operation for a couple other sums if you want, but let's move on to a more in-depth proof of two groups being isomorphic. We'll do a classic example showing that the set of real numbers under addition is isomorphic to the set of positive reals under multiplication. To show two groups are isomorphic, we're going to need to find a function between them. We'll have to just pick one and hopefully it works. We'll have to show that the function is bijective, meaning we'll have to show it's injective and surjective. And then finally, we'll have to show that our bijection preserves the group operation. So let's begin by finding a function between the two groups that might work. If you remember your exponent laws, you may realize that this is a decent choice for a function from the reals to the positive reals, f of x equals e to the x because the product of two exponentials results in an addition of their exponents. So perhaps we can use this function to show the connection between the additive reals and the multiplicative positive reals. Let's try showing that it's a bijection first. To show our function is bijective, we begin by showing it's injective. So let's assume f of x equals f of y for two elements of the domain x and y. We need to show that this implies x equals y, and that's fairly easy. If f of x equals f of y, then by definition of the function, e to the x equals e to the y. But if they're equal, then their natural logs must also be equal. But then, of course, the natural log undoes the exponentiation, and we have that x equals y. So if two images under the function are equal, then their preimages must be equal. Thus, the function is injective. To prove the function is surjective, let's take an arbitrary positive real number from the codomain. Note that the natural log of a positive real number is defined and is a real number. So the natural log of y is an element of our domain. Thus, we could put it into our function. f of ln y, by definition, is equal to e to the ln y. But that's just equal to y. And so we've taken an arbitrary element from the codomain and found that there will be an element in the domain that our function maps to the given codomain element. Thus, every element of the codomain is getting mapped to, so the function f is surjective. 
Thus, our function is a bijection. All that remains is to prove that it preserves the group operation. And this is very easy. Let's just consider f of a plus b for two arbitrary real numbers, a and b. By definition of the function, this equals e to the a plus b. But by our exponent laws, that equals e to the a times e to the b. By definition of the function, that's f of a times f of b. And so we see f of a plus b equals f of a times f of b. Our function f preserves the group operation. Thus, we've shown there exists an isomorphism, namely f of x equals e to the x, between this group and this group. Thus, they are isomorphic groups. Finding this one isomorphism between the two groups verifies that they are isomorphic. There may, in fact, be other isomorphisms between the groups, but we only need to find one to show that the groups are indeed isomorphic groups. They have precisely the same structure and can really be considered as just renamed versions of each other. Once more, to show two groups are isomorphic, you first need to take an educated guess at a function between them that might be an isomorphism. Then you need to show that function is bijective. Then you need to show the function preserves the group operation, and then you're done. Generally, it's easier to show that two groups are not isomorphic to each other. And how could you do that? Well, if two groups are isomorphic to each other, they have the exact same structure. So if you can find some property inherent to one group that isn't shared by the other group, then they cannot possibly be isomorphic. Some examples of properties you could look for to show that two groups are not isomorphic are here. Maybe G1 is commutative, but G2 is not. Then they can't possibly be isomorphic. Maybe G1 is cyclic, but G2 is not then they can't be isomorphic. Maybe G1 has an element of order n for some n, but G2 doesn't. Well, then they can't be isomorphic. Maybe the order of G1 is not equal to the order of G2, and they definitely can't be isomorphic because there can't be any bijection between them, let alone one that preserves the group operation. These are just a few examples of properties you might look for. Link in the description to a lesson using properties like these to show two groups are not isomorphic. Let's finish by looking at a few theorems that we'll prove in this course. Link to the proofs in the description. If we have an isomorphism between two groups, that isomorphism will map the identity of one group to the identity of the other group. Also, an isomorphism maps inverses to inverses. So the image of an element's inverse is the inverse of the element's image. Also, probably not a shocker, the isomorphism is an equivalence relation on the set of all groups. And finally, the big one, Cayley's theorem. Every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. That's a tremendous theorem. You probably could have guessed yourself that this would be the most important one. Again, it's called Cayley's theorem. It's a big deal. Link in the description to the proof. I hope you found this a useful introduction to isomorphic groups and isomorphisms. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching. to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Hello. 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 Hello.